All right, hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and this is gonna be kind of my, my review, overview, personal thoughts, you name it, of the Huawei Watch 2. Now this is the sport edition. Uh, there is a classic edition, but the one that I personally have that's my daily driver for my smartwatch is the sport edition. First things first, this is my first ever video without my face, uh, as well as my first ever video using a lavalier mic. So if the mic quality is good or bad, that is why. Obviously, if it's not that good, I will make sure of that for the future not to use it again. If it's okay, let me know in the comment section below and I will definitely be using this kind of format for the future. And also, I'm using a webcam, so I'm I apologize if the, the quality is not that amazing. Um, and I don't have autofocus on right now, so I have my focusing set to pretty close so that it doesn't like have that weird ghosting effect like it's been doing in my previous videos. So without that, we'll get that out of the way. First of all, we got the packaging here, which I'm not gonna get into. There's really nothing fancy inside the box. It does look really good though. I like the overall look of the box here. It's kind of a cool like flower design because it like kind of opens up like a flower would. And I found that to be very, very cool. Um, but overall, off the bat, I've had this for about a month now and I've loved every minute I've had this watch. I just gotta say that right now. For those people that are very skeptical about smartwatches, especially Android smartwatches, and they think they're kind of a dying breed, I can rest assured that it is not. And I use this as daily, a daily driver. I use this every single day, just like I use my cell phone, which I'm using for recording my voice right now. And being that I use my cell phone on a daily basis for my job and at home, I like having a watch on me that states all my notifications and everything right on the go. So I don't always have to whip on my phone to see everything, you know, on the go. So it's really cool having everything coming right to your phone, I mean your watch, sorry, as well as visual notifications and also sound notifications. So it does have a built-in speaker, which by the way, this other box sitting here is my old smartwatch, which I upgraded from, which was the original LG Urbane. Uh, which they do have a second version of this which came out in late 2016 but I figured the Huawei was the better way to go because it has built-in NFC as well as again a built-in speaker which the Urbane second edition does not have sadly this is my old one as you can see I don't know if you can really see that but it's kind of scuffed up it's pretty scratched up um, I am selling it at the moment so I'm going to be selling that because I just don't use it anymore and it still works um, it's not doesn't have battery in it right now but it does work and it's it did its time. It did what it needed to as long as I had it. I think I had it for about two years and I've loved every minute of this watch. I didn't have any issues with it until recently with the new Android 2.0 update, which basically moved all of the apps to like a side button in like a scrolling fashion like this. Uh, when that came out, that kind of messed up the Urbane to be a lot slower, a lot more sluggish. Whereas the Huawei Watch 2 definitely picks up the pace and works flawlessly with the Android 2.0 update because it shipped with that built into it, which is really cool. It's made for it. So it's meant to be very fluid uh, and not have any issues in that sort. I'm gonna turn off the light real quick because I noticed that I'm getting a lot of glare on the screen. Uh, before I do that, I wanna show the outer body so if I can turn off the display there. I do have the always on display, so uh, it shows the watch or at least the information, but just not in color. So it saves on battery life and it's not as bright. Um, but going around the actual design here, you can see it's, I got the sport edition. So we have this nice chrome finish around the actual bezel of the display, but then around the outer side is more of like a really hard plastic. It does look very nice though. And I love what they did with the plastic. It makes it look very metallic. And the rest of the shirt it is not metallic. I will take actually this band off. This band is an aftermarket band. It did not come with it. So this one I bought for about $20 off Amazon. Uh, it was actually certified by Huawei to work with the watch. So I recommend making sure in the uh, description of watch bands that it does state that it is certified for the Huawei 2 because there's some out there that only work with the first edition and so on and so forth, but they might not be the right size. Uh, but this one, 20 bucks, I mean, it, it's really nice. It's got a very strong clasp. It's very high quality material. It's full metal and it looks really good. Um, with the black finish because originally it just comes with a leather band. I'm not, I've never been a fan of leather um, on watches, so I just I like the metal a lot better. On the bottom here, we have this nice uh, metallic uh, coating, which is metal, and then they have the heart rate sensor and the charging dock, which is magnetic, uh, so it snaps right on the dock very easily. A lot more, a lot better magnet, I should say, than it did on the Urbane. Uh, this one kind of, you had to really find the sweet spot for it to connect to the dock, where this one is literally, you have the dock this far away and it goes, Right, on a, right into place, it's perfect. I love, love the magnet on that. 
And we do have two physical buttons on the side here, which both do work. None of them are dummy buttons, which is really nice. So this one is a programmable button. You can program it to do basically any app you can think of. I personally have it on the Android Pay. So as soon as I click it, it goes right into Android Pay. I'm not gonna do that because it shows my credit card, but essentially you click that button if I wanna buy something and just basically scan the watch next to the pad and it automatically goes through NFC, which is really cool. And then we also have the menu button, which just goes into all your apps, uh, which you can scroll through. Um, love it or hate it, uh, that's the new Android 2.0. You have to use a button for it to go to that option. Where in the past, you used to just swipe to the left and it would go to your apps. But now swiping to the left actually goes to your watch faces. So I don't know if I'm really a huge fan of that or not, but I mean, it's a physical button and it's always there. You're never gonna lose it, so that is nice. And then still swiping from the top, we get our main uh, notifications, our main settings, I should say. Airplane mode off and on, your sound off and on, which is a, a new feature just to this watch, as well as any smartwatch that has a built-in speaker. So you can turn off the sound if you're like in a place where you don't wanna get a phone call and have it ringing. Uh, your setting, your brightness, I should say. So if you're indoor or outdoor, you can make it super bright and you can, uh, you can't really see that, but there's a plus and minus. Um, button for the brightness and then we have the do not disturb disturb button so if you don't want to be disturbed and then your settings which go to your major settings which you can pretty much edit anything on the watch um one thing that they did add with new the android 2.0 which is kind of cool is from the watch itself you can actually find apps on the app store and install them right to the watch and now with this they also made it where you have to actually update your app separately on the watch than on your phone which is a little bit odd but it is something to get used to but it is kind of cool because then you know you're always up to date and all of your apps will be on the watch so if you're going to install a watch face if you install it on the phone it will not come to the watch right away you actually have to manually install it on the phone on the watch as well separate from the phone which is kind of cool um, also kind of weird I guess but it works and then they also have four gigabytes of storage built into this guy so you can put your own music onto it if you don't want to carry your phone with you for running or something like that you can have a small playlist of music which is pretty cool kind of wish they had a little bit more storage maybe 10 gigs but you know I can't really complain too much because I have my phone on me all the time anyway I haven't had an issue where I've had to actually upload music straight to the device uh, so that there is that which is really nice all right, and now with the lights off, you can see the screen a little bit better, hopefully. Um, as you can see, we have my watch face, which is the Neo watch face. This is a free one you can get off of Android, uh, the Play Store, I should say. Uh, it does come pre-installed with a ton of free ones. None of them I was a huge fan of. You know, you got the regular analog ones, you got the digital ones, you got the tracker ones, the fitness ones, all those, you know, fun to, I guess, mess, mess around with customize. And right from the watch, like I said, you can click right on get more watch faces and go to the store and look up watch faces, grab them and put them right on without any issues or hassles, which I really enjoy. Um, also, uh, let's go actually into the apps here to see what I have pre-installed on the device itself. And I'm hoping that we can see this well enough at least. So we have your contacts, settings, Play Store, uh, agenda, alarm, Android Pay, Authenticator, which is basically just if you have two-step verification with any Google account, you can get on your watch and say yes, which is really nice. Your battery levels, uh, calculator, contacts, daily tracking, find my phone. Another amazing feature, another reason I love having a smartwatch, if you ever lose your phone, you click on this, it will call your phone uh, as long as you're in range of the Bluetooth or if you have the Wi-Fi mode on, uh, it will also work via Wi-Fi. I'm gonna actually turn the, vol the brightness down and see if that I think that'll be a lot better actually. Um, what I was saying though is if you're connected to Wi-Fi with your smartwatch, no matter where you are, as long as your phone is connected to the Wi-Fi, it will um, basically call it so you can find your phone. And vice versa, if you lose the watch for some reason, you can call the watch and since it has a speaker, you can find it a lot easier than just vibrating, which is really, really cool. Uh, and let's go back down here. Uh, Fit, so we have the Google Fit app, so again, Fitness tracker, or fit, uh, sorry, not fitness tracker, but we have a pedometer built in, as well as heart rate monitor, which is really cool. Flashlight, so it just basically makes the screen super bright, so you can use it as a flashlight at night if you can't find your keys or something. Heart rate sensor, like I said, keep, which is just basically like notes, uh, which <laughs> I guess in my uh, my own personal use, I use I've used Keep I guess in class before, where like you can put it as a note, and then if you hide the screen, it goes in like a black and white mode, and you can barely see the text. And not saying you should do this, but uh, you can kind of cheat on tests with that if your professor doesn't notice they have a watch on. So that's kind of cool. Then we get another calculator app, um, Outlook, so your, your mail, 
your phone, you can look at all your contacts, you can send messages right from the watch itself. Uh, reminders, Runtastic, which I guess is another fitness app, settings, Shazam. So it's got a built-in microphone, so you can make phone calls right from the watch as well. Uh, the loudspeaker is very clear and works really well. I've made a few phone calls from the watch, haven't had any issues, and they said I sound just fine as well. So like I said, built-in microphone. Uh, so we can listen to music and it'll tell you the artist straight from the watch is really cool through Shazam. And then I skipped a few here. Stopwatch, which is one of the biggest things I use. Uh, I just say, okay, you know the name and it brings up you with my voice activation. I'd say make a stopwatch or a timer for this and vice versa. Really nice for cooking. Uh, and then we have a translator, weather, workout, and then your feed. Uh, so you can see your Google now right from the watch. And when I've used like the Google Now stuff, so using my voice to activate stuff, it actually works really well. I'll see if I can do this real quick without, you know, actually it won't work because my phone is right down here and it tries to open on my phone and it might actually stop my recording, which I do not want that to happen. So sadly I can't really test that, but I can, pr I can assure you that the Google Now Assistant works very well on the Huawei too. The, the microphone picks it up really well no matter if I'm at work in front of a lot of people or if I'm in a very quiet situation such as my room right now. Uh, but for the most part it works very well. Charging is also extremely fast and battery life is pretty much on the good side. I get roughly a day and a half of solid battery life and that's with having the always on screen. So like I said, it's always on, it's always got all the information right on the home screen here without me having to turn it off. Um, but it does, again, dim the display and turns the color off to help save battery life. Get about a full day and a half, and that's including, you know, emails being received, text messages, Snapchats, Instagram notifications, Twitter, you name it, all throughout the day, which I don't have the sound on right now, but I have vibration, so it's, vi it's using the motor to vibrate. And with all that, again, a day and a half is pretty solid for a smartwatch, in my opinion. Especially that every night I have it next to me on a dock that I can charge it so I don't really worry about it dying. Um, but again, I've had a few nights where I've been at friends' houses where I don't bring the dock with me and it lasted again a day and a half, not an issue. Um, definitely better than if it only lasts like seven hours or so, then I would have a complaint. And as for charging, this thing will get, um, if you're at like 10% left, you throw it on the dock charger, this thing will charge from 10% up to 85% within about 15 to 20 minutes, which is extremely fast, at least in my opinion. I think that's very fast for any type of smartwatch. A lot faster than the Urbane, which used to take about an hour to charge fully, roughly 40 minutes to charge 80%, uh, which wasn't bad again, but this, this is way faster. So very fast charging, no complaints whatsoever. Again, built-in MSC as well, so if you wanna use it for Android Pay, right out of the box you can use that. It will not work with Samsung Pay or Apple Pay, sadly, but it will work with Android Pay. As for specifications, which I don't usually get into huge specs, because I'm not a huge spec guy, um, but if you wanted to know, the display is a 1.2 inch uh, 390 by 390 pixel AMOLED display. So AMOLED makes the richer blacks, the colors really pop, and it does look very beautiful. It's a tiny bit smaller than the original Urbane that I had, but I haven't honestly noticed. And the cool thing is there's no flat tire effect like you got on the Moto 360. It's a full circle, which is very, very nice. Four gigabytes of internal storage, 768 megabytes of RAM, so it's very nice for that. Uh, it's very quick, speedy. I haven't noticed much lag. Um, here and there when you're slipping through watch faces and stuff like that, um, or if you're using a lot of apps at once, you will notice some lag, but for the most part, not bad at all. Again, built-in speaker, built-in vibrate motor, so it will vibrate on your wrist. Um, that is one little tiny complaint, is the vibrate motor could be a little bit stronger. I understand they made it lighter so that it's a lot quieter, and honestly, it's quiet. You will not hear this vibrate motor, even if you're in a quiet room, I cannot hear it, but you will feel it. Um, but if you're moving around a lot or if you're running, you will not feel the vibrate motor, which is kind of a shame, because uh, it's kind of the one reason you want a smartwatch is so you get your notifications without having to pull your phone out or having to feel for your phone to vibrate. Um, and my phone itself has a weak vibrate motor as it is, so it kind of sucks. Sometimes I do miss a lot of notifications if I only have both my devices on vibrate. Uh, uses Wi-Fi 802.11, B, G, and N, so no AC current, sadly, which is, but it's, it's all right, it works for what it is. Bluetooth 4.1, which is nice, but the original one is only 4.0, which had some issues with connecting like via my car. Uh, if I had my watch on, I couldn't get music to play through my car because it'd be very staticky. They have not had any issues with this watch at all, which is awesome. I don't have to turn my watch off when getting in the car, which is super annoying. Again, built-in NFC, um, no built-in radio, no USB. So if you want to add music on it, you have to add it through the phone, uh, through the Android Wear app, which is kind of cumbersome, but it is possible to do. Has the accelerometer, gyro, heart rate sensor, barometer, and compass all built in. Messaging, you can message from the app, which I can show you a quick message tutorial here. So we're gonna scroll through our apps until we find M. There we go, messages, click on that. 
And then it'll show you all your messages on your phone already, which um, we don't really need to look at, I guess. But I'm going to set a new message. And then it's going to go through all your favorite contacts first, but it'll scroll through all your contacts when you get to the bottom. Let's just send one to Chris real quick. Um, and I have two phone numbers under him, but we'll just select the first one. Say yes. And then you can do by voice, by emoji, or by actual keyboard. So the keyboard works, but it is very small, as you can see. So it's a little bit difficult, but it is possible. So And it also has the swipe thing, so you can go like, hey. But see, sometimes it's not very accurate. So I recommend probably just ticking away at it. And sometimes the autocorrect is your best friend. And then we'll just space. How, there we go, are you. And there we go. So the autocorrect really helps up there. And then in order to send it, you just send, hit the little send button. I'm not going to just because there's no need to do this. But essentially, that is how to send a message with your watch. And then if you want to get out of it, pretty much just uh, hit the button, the menu button, and swipe left. You keep swiping left, swipe left, and there we go. And that's really cool. I love I love the, that you can message people right from the, the watch as well as call people right from the watch instead of using your phone. It's a very nice, especially if you're in class or at work, can't take your phone out. It is possible. I recommend using the voice command though more than the buttons are actually touching the display because it's just easier to see it's easier to input it's a lot faster if you're not in a quiet area um, if you're able to talk definitely use the voice command it's very accurate and you can literally say an entire paragraph and it'll spell the entire thing out for you it lets you check before sending and you can edit it again on the watch if you need to but it is very nice and it works very well when it comes to voice activated stuff so overall voice activation it's a, it's an a plus microphone quality is amazing and lastly, I should talk about that people have had, or at least talked about in forums, that, that this watch itself has had issues disconnecting with their devices or having connectivity issues in general. Having this for a month straight, using it every single day, I have not once had it disconnect from my device or have any issues whatsoever with connections. Maybe it was a software update that fixed it, but I have no idea. But I can just re I can reassure you should not have any issues with your device at all when it comes to connection issues. Um, and overall lag and everything has been very good. Uh, or no leg basically at all and battery life again a plus so with all being said i gotta say that the huawei watch 2 the sport edition has been a definite a plus for me i have not had any issues at least big ones that really have deterred me from from wanting to purchase this device or making me regret the purchase now this is a hefty price to pay i paid about 250 for this device so again 250 dollars of american money to buy a smartwatch a lot of people might say that's not really worth it you can get actually a whole cell phone for that price and yes that is true but if you're somebody like me who's on their phone you know 14 15 hours of the day and you don't want to have to pull out of your pocket every time you get a notification to swipe it away it's very nice to have that visual representation on your arm ready to go same with replying to messages or phone calls or anything like that if you're not able to pull out your phone while at work or at school someone and so forth it's very nice to have that and especially if you're someone like me that receives emails almost you know every 20 minutes it's very nice to be able to swipe them away and call them off or, or reply to them without having again to take out the phone it's more i guess you could look at it as more of a nicety or i guess laziness but for what it is it's a very nice and capable smartwatch and i think for me personally it's more than worth the money uh, so if you're looking at getting a smartwatch and you're looking at more of an elegant look um, again it is a little bit bulky uh, i haven't really noticed it being that bad at least on me um, but using it as a daily driver, I've gotten a lot of compliments on it. People have actually thought it's a real watch until they touch the display and see that it is a smart watch. Um, but that's what it looks like on a wrist. You can you can see it does have quite a little bit of heftiness. It's not it's not heavy though. It's very light. It's actually a lot lighter than the Urbane was. Um, but it, it definitely fits very nice, very snug. That will obviously depend on the which band you use. But for what it is and for what I use it for, it fits and works very nicely. I apologize for rambling a lot and I apologize if, if uh, I said a little bit too much or I repeated a lot of the same things. Just wanted to get my thoughts and opinions out on the Huawei Watch Sport 2. Uh, if you have any of your own opinions, please leave them below. I love uh, hearing what you guys think and I'll reply to as many as I can. Um, and if you want to see more reviews like this in the future on just tech that I've tried out or that I use on a daily basis, you like hearing my thoughts, let me know as well. Um, I like feedback and I would like to uh, make more for the future. So. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much my thoughts and review overview of the Huawei Watch 2 Sport Edition. If you have any uh, final thoughts, comment below. Leave a like to show your support as always. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out.